So if you're conservative, but you want to go to something like Woodstock, where do you go? Jeffrey Hunt from the Centennial Institute has the perfect answer. Do you ever go by Jeffrey? I've always known you sure. as Jeff. Yeah, you can call me Jeffrey. Mr. Hunt. So <laughs> this is the 10th year anniversary of the Western Conservative Summit, That's which right. is, um, I think it rivals CPAC, mm -hmm. the Conservative Action uh, uh, Coalition uh, event out in D.C. This thing is mammoth. I mean, it's, it started small. Yeah. It's big. Yeah. It is uh, and mind you, it's as much fun as conservatives can have, <laughs> uh, but it's, you know, considering your conservatives, it's, it's not bad. When is it? Yeah, July 12th through the 13th this year, um, and uh, it's going to be a fun one. Uh, this will be, like you said, the 10th year of the Western Conservative Summit. John Andrews and Bill Armstrong started this in a hotel room or hotel ballroom. What the hell were they doing yeah. in a hotel room? <laughs> now we've got something. <laughs> a hotel ballroom up in uh, Lone Tree. And we were going through the numbers recently. Uh, their first Western Conservative Summit, they had 16 speakers, and the entire agenda fit on a single sheet of paper. Uh, and basically, they wanted to get conservatives together. This was in the rise of the right. Tea Party movement, which was so important uh, as conservatives grassroots conservatives organized and really started to fight back. And so they were kind of right at the beginning of that. They thought they might have 200, 300 people show up. 700 people showed up. Yeah. And uh, it's grown every year since. And well, I remember the, the early days, you know, it went from this hotel and it outgrew that. <laughs> and then it went to this hotel and it outgrew that. And, yeah. and now you're doing it at the convention center. Right. You know, which means you get to pay all the union prices. Right. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah, uh, we need to move that started. electric <laughs> cable. No, no, a union guy has to pick up that electric cable and, and move it over. Three guys, three guys for too. every job. That's right. That's well, right. Going back to the start of this, and, yeah. and, and people might not get that you, you and I are, are uh, brothers from the same father and just right. different mothers, and that John Andrews started the Independence Institute right. back in 1985, um, and then he started the Centennial Institute at Colorado Christian University. When did he, when did he start um, Centennial? Uh, 2009. Yeah. 2009. And, and then the summit came uh, 2010, the next year. So. All right. And so without John Andrews, Neither of us would have a job, <laughs> right. all right? Right, yeah, right. We'd, we'd be he, unemployed. And he's, he's famous for so much. Uh, we often you know, call him the Johnny Appleseed, the conservative yeah. movement. He's gone around and been a part of the creation of the Chavano Institute, which was uh, at Hillsdale and created right. in Primus. The which state, is their magazine that goes out to like three, 28 four million, million yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the State Policy Network, he was the founder, co-founder and chairperson of the- Which connects uh, the all of us groups Network. together and keeps us all networked in. That's right. Yeah, he went down to Texas and started helped out the Texas Public Policy Foundation. Yeah, this is that guy who's just always he, he over-caffeinated. But it's also <laughs> amazing to me that a hardcore libertarian like me with yeah. my libertarian-ish group and your um, repressive god-awful organization, <laughs> you know, comes, comes from the same thing because the overlap is, you know, it's 90, 95 percent uh, all on, this, on the same issues. And and so John starting this was just just amazing. And Will Armstrong, yep. uh, Senator Will Armstrong, for those who know, was just a, a, an incredible powerhouse in here in Colorado. That's right. And uh, um, and you honor him with a gala every yep. year now. Yeah, tell, tell me that's about right. That. So Bill Armstrong was in office uninterrupted for nearly 30 years. He did lose one seat uh, that he ran for one time. And he uh, a lot of people don't know this, but he ran for lieutenant governor. Of the oh, state really? at one point, yeah. Oh yes. And uh, and uh, his son Will, uh, who had lost a race uh, uh, at one point, but uh, uh, Bill said to him, "Don't worry, son. You'll never forget the race that you lost." <laughs> you know? um, but he he sat in. He was in office, a state house, state senate, U.S. House representatives, right. and then two-term uh, U.S. senator and term limited himself. Said, "I'm I'm done. I'm going to go uh, into business after this." And he was very successful there as well. So uh, he was a change agent at Colorado Christian University, really got it back on track, uh, uh, got it on the right course. And then part of his vision was the creation of the Western Conservative Summit. So each year we give our biggest award called the William L. Armstrong Award to, uh, to some, a national figure uh, for their conservative leadership. And in this year, it's going to be Robert George from Princeton University, who's one of the uh, smartest uh, conservatives out there competing at the highest levels of the intellectual uh, space. This is a who's who of national politics. You know, so if, if you're a Fox News fan, this, this, is, this is like Comic-Con for, for Fox News. <laughs> I mean, right. you just seem to always get That's them. Right. Donald Trump, when he was running for president, 
had to come to this event. Yeah. Um, uh, and he, he said you were a nice guy. So there, <laughs> there you have it. Who, who, give, me, give me some of the names. Yeah. Who's going to be at this? So we always try to have a good balance. We want to cover you know, intellectual issues and have you know, the brightest minds there, folks like Al Mohler, who heads up Southern Seminary, probably one of the leading figures in the Southern Baptist Convention, uh, will be speaking. Robert George, as I mentioned. And then we love the grassroots leaders. So you have Michelle Malkin. You have uh, Tom Fitton. Uh, uh, Dan Crenshaw. You have you, these great. You, you understand this is Colorado Public Television. They don't know any of those <laughs> names. <laughs> and and but w w often people ask me like, what is the core audience? Who do you want to come to just, this? Just and say, I just say just say Chomsky's coming, and they'll all come. <laughs> there you go. And no, we did invite the Democrats, and in fact, the, you, you, always, the, you always bring out. You always invite uh, presidential candidates, yep. and you get a huge amount. And everyone always asks you. Why don't you ever have the Democrats? What, you scared? <laughs> and we, we do. We invite them every single year, going back to John Andrews, because we're nonpartisan. We're a 501c3. So if we're going to bring in the Republican candidates, we're going to bring in the Democrat candidates. They never come. And in fact, the uh, Colorado Springs uh, Gazette had an editorial from their board saying that the Democrat leaders of this state, the liberal leaders, need to come to the Western Conservative Summit because our theme this year is defending religious freedom in America's First Amendment. Um, that should be a nonpartisan issue. Right? It's the First right. Amendment. When did the First Amendment become a partisan issue? Um, but I, we heard today that Senator Bennett's not coming. Uh, John Hickenlooper got back to us. He's not coming. So we're holding out. Uh, have you ever Jared invited? Jared Polis. Yeah. You know, we, we still have an invitation into him. Uh, he did join our National Day of Prayer call, and we appreciated that. Um, and so we would love for him to come to the summit this year, talk about the importance of religious freedom and the First Amendment, what that means to him and his leadership here of the state. Well, and... How, how to put this? So Hickenlooper goes to some crowd in L.A. or something, and he's you know, giving his speech to all. He's one of the 300 candidates, and he says something nice about ca capitalism, <laughs> and he gets just <laughs> devoured uh, by by you know the hateful progressives who just can't stand any of that kind of diversity. My sense is even if Polis came to this event, these these are these are conservatives, mostly Christians, not all. That that if he came, he wouldn't get booed no. because you guys just don't do that. Um, I, I think it's a real mistake for liberals and progressives not to not to come and do these invites. Yeah, um, uh, it would bridge a lot of gaps. Right, right, and on non-controversial issues, right, religious freedom and the First Amendment. Um, so, oh, you are I, so I, naive. <laughs> Let me tell you, First Amendment and religious freedom when it comes to uh, uh, cake bakers is not a non-controversial no, no, issue. You're right. You're right. So, you know, I hope he'll come. But uh, the lineup is wonderful. Uh, going back to our very first summit, we had 16 speakers. This year we have over 50. It's the most speakers we've ever had. Uh, like I mentioned, the first program was on one page. We just went to print this morning. Over 130 pages in the program. Uh, one reporter calls it Conservapalooza, <laughs> and that's the best way to understand it. So. The other part of this uh, is there are a lot of things you go to and people just talk at you. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of talking at you. And so you, you don't have 50-whatever people who are just talking at you. You actually have real breakout sessions. Yeah. You've got you got different tracks for people who are into different things, whether it's religious freedom, whether it's taxes, whether it's activism. Talk about that stuff, because for me, that's where the rubber meets the road. I think there are a lot of conservatives who keep Fox News on in the background, and they're, they're thrilled, and they get angry, and yeah, you go it. But the idea that, no, there's a world right under your feet here in Colorado, here locally, that you can get involved with and you can make a difference, uh, I think a lot of conservatives miss that opportunity, and and this is this is a place that you can you can connect with people who are working on the ground. Right, right. So you can attend workshops. We have dozens and dozens of workshops where you can go deep on particular issues. Also, learn how to run a campaign. Learn how to get involved locally. But um, what's wonderful about this is that. Um, uh, we're going we're gonna to create a space where we can discuss the issues that we're facing in our state. So a great example is national popular vote, right? You can come learn about the national popular vote, what we're facing here in the state, what's going to be on the ballot, hopefully, hopefully. this fall. I think um, it will be. Actually, next fall. Beyond or next fall. You're right. Uh, get, get, sign the petition to join there, but also learn how you can get involved with that. Um, the fracking issues in our state. What can you do to help um, protect 
uh, our, our oil and gas industry in the state and all the jobs that are connected with that. And then we're going to have representatives from the Independence Institute talking yeah. about the threat to Tabor. Well, there, which, goes, there goes your, your event. <laughs> but I mean, that it, we've talked about this, John, yeah. privately. You, you look at all the things that we face here in Colorado, Tabor is absolutely critical. We've got to protect it. And no matter where you are in the conservative libertarian perspective, it's you've not, got to not, get behind it's and not even, fight hard it's not for even that. that. Forget, forget the conservative libertarian. If you are liberal, you yeah. believe in consent. Yeah. And, and with consent, you should have consensual taxation, which is what Tabor, the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, guarantees. Right. Government can grow as much as you like. You can go into debt as much as you like. You can keep all the excess of refunds you like. All you have to do is ask consent first. And I am so amazed how the left despises consent <laughs> when it comes to your wallet, but when it comes to consent in any other category, man, that is their calling card. Yeah. And so I, I welcome some liberals to come in there and learn about that. Yeah. Uh, we've got about a minute left. Sure. Talk about, um, this, this sounds like an awful thing if for, for the people who are watching, because if you're a liberal, why would you want to <laughs> go to this? What, what kind of freak show do you want to go to? What, why should somebody who disagrees with you show up? And they would be welcome. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and we've had uh, protesters both inside and outside before. Not that I'm welcoming you know, yeah. protesters inside. But um, listen, there's not a lot of places where we get together to talk about yeah. the issues that are important to us as a state. Um, I hope Jared Polis will come. I hope our liberal friends will come. I hope that they'll learn and listen our perspectives so that they can uh, better understand who we are instead of just shouting at each other all the time. Right. Thousands of people come to this. So right. if you want to get involved, if you want to go, where do they go to get a ticket? Uh, the website is westernconservativesummit.com. That's westernconservativesummit.com. And uh, yeah, we're, we're That's very well done. over 2,000. repeating you just did. It was almost like you were raised <laughs> by broadcasters. So. That's right. <laughs> westernconservative.com. Um, yeah. And there's still time. Absolutely. So we're just a few weeks from the summit. And uh, the date again is July 12th through the 13th. Right. So you get through the 4th of July weekend uh, and you want to be a part of this. This is great. But this is an opportunity to come down and interact. What I love about our speakers is that they come out to the crowd and talk with folks. Always fun. I'll be there. Awesome. But you should come anyway. <laughs> Listen for me on KHOW Radio. Read me in the Denver Post. We'll see you next week.